one bottle of Delta G Performance versus three bottles of Ketone IQ from HVMN. Which one do you think increased my blood BHP levels more? Well, that's what we're gonna find out in this video. So let's start with talking about the ingredients because understanding what those products contain and how they metabolize us in the body is crucial to understanding and interpreting my findings or my measurements. So on the Delta G side, we have the original ketone, the Oxford ketone ester that was developed in 2003 as part of a joint venture be between the National Institute of Health and the University of Oxford. And the DARPA paid for all of that because they wanted to develop a product or a compound that could improve the performance of the tactical operators in the military. You know, mental performance, cognitive performance, as well as athletic performance or physical performance. And so along the way, that seemed to pan out. You know, the product worked and they came up with a ketone ester that is still the same one that we find in Delta G today. Now, HVMN or ketone IQ on the other hand is not an ester. And that's where some of the confusion comes in because the truth is that until a couple of years ago, HBMN also marketed a ketone ester, the same ketone ester, in fact, but that was in 2017 when the company sold what's called Ketone 1.0. And that was a ketone ester. It was relatively expensive and mostly affordable by elite athletes or by, you know, maybe law enforcement personnel that needed to improve their performance. But along the way, HBMN lost the license to market that ketone ester. And so they had to launch a new product. And that was in 2022 when HVMN launched Ketone IQ. And Ketone IQ is no longer an ester. It does no longer contain an ester. Instead, it contains butendile. And that makes a difference. So let's talk about what that means from a chemical perspective and from an energetics perspective. So let's look at what happens in your body when a ketone ester metabolizes versus when butendile metabolizes. And I know it's a little bit nerdy, but stick with me because that's important to understand why you see different results as far as your blood BHP levels are concerned. So when a ketone, a ketone monoester, such as the one in Delta G, metabolizes in the body, it leads to one part BHP, beta hydroxybutyrate, another half a part BHP, and half a part of acetoacetate or ACAC. And if you combine all of those, if you add everything up, then you realize you have one and a half parts of BHP and have a part of ACAC. So you have a three to one ratio of BHP to ACAC, and that's important, so stick with me. On the ketone IQ side, you have half a part of BHP and half a part of ACAC. So it's basically, you know, if you compare those two, you have almost like, you know, a, a part of the ketone monoester is the putendile. And, and that's in fact what it is because the monoester in Delta G is the ketone component, which is, you know, metabolized into BHP, and the alcohol component, which is the butendile. And in ketone IQ, you only have the butendile. So you have half a part BHP and half a part of ACAC in ketone IQ. So you have a one-to-one -one ratio of BHP to ACAC. And that is crucial because the higher the BHP to ACAC ratio is, the more energy your mitochondria in the form of ATP can produce. And more energy production means greater benefits if we want to oversimplify it. And so looked at it from a different perspective, 10 grams of Delta G ketones contain three times as much BHP as 10 grams of ketone IQ, simply because of their different ingredients, right? So what does it mean now in terms of effectiveness, in terms of changes in BHP levels in the blood? So what I did is I used my Keto Mojo and I used my trusted Biosense, my breath ketone monitor, and I tested my blood and breath ketone levels before ingesting the product. And then at 30, 60, and 90 minutes, and then a couple of hours later, just to see how the long-term effects would be. The results were surprising. I suspected what would happen, but I did not expect the extent of the discrepancy between those two products. So if you look at the table, we can see that before I started with the Delta G performance, and that contains 27 grams of the ketone ester versus three bottles containing each 10 grams, so 30 grams in total of ketone IQ. And before I did the test, and I did this over a couple of days, I repeated those tests a couple of times just to see if you know there would be any major discrepancies. But on that one day, I had 0.3 mmol per liter of blood ketones or BHP, 
So I was not quite in nutritional ketosis, just some residual with the Delta G. And on the day I took the ketone IQ, I had 0.2. So very comparable. Within 30 minutes, my BHP levels after consuming that one bottle of Delta G performance I increased to 4.8 mmol per liter. That's a significant increase. Whereas on the flip side with Ketone IQ, three bottles of Ketone IQ, they increased, BHP only increased to 1.3 mmol per liter. And then you can see as time goes by at the 60 and 90 minute mark, we obviously see a drop off, but it's a, the difference between Delta G and Ketone IQ is almost a three, or it's about a three X, you know? And that makes a lot of sense because with Delta G performance, I actually get three times as much BHP as I do with ketone IQ. In fact, you know, if you really want to compare side by side, I actually consumed slightly less ke Delta G than I did ketone IQ. So 27 grams versus 30 grams. So the difference might have been even a little bit more had I consumed 30 grams of Delta G, but the bottle only has 27 and I didn't want to, you know, measure it up from a second bottle. So that was quite interesting. And expected to a degree, but I honestly, I didn't expect such a, such a difference at the 30 minute mark. And then out of curiosity, of course, you know, I also used my Biosense breath ketone monitor to measure my acetone, my, you know, my ACE levels or the acetone in my breath. And I saw a similar results, but not quite as stark. That was interesting. You know, so before I started, I had two ACEs in both cases, which roughly corresponds to the 0.2 mmol per liter. And then the increase was slower, but more sustained. In fact, I, re I retained those ACE levels for several hours, which was interesting. Whereas my blood ketone levels, you know, kept dropping off. And, and then I hovered in, in the case of Delta G at the 1.0 mmol per liter for a couple of hours before they dropped off more. So that was interesting. And then, of course, I repeated the same test with lower concentrations. So I have the Delta G Gold, which one serving contains only five grams of ketone ester and one bottle of ketone IQ, so 10 grams. And I noticed a comparable, comparable results. In fact, uh, five grams of Delta G outperformed slightly the 10 grams of ketone IQ, which again, you know, overall, everything combined, all of my tests combined showed me that the same amount of ketone ester from delta g outperformed ketone iq the same amount of ketone iq by two to three hundred percent so two to three at uh, two to three x and that again goes back to how the body metabolizes those ingredients and how much bhp each of those ingredients contain so that was interesting and now you might say well but you know delta g is significantly more expensive well hold your horses because we're gonna break it down and normalize the pricing based on the amount of BHP you get from each of the products and how much of an increase in terms of blood BHP levels you get. But before we talk about pricing, let's talk about flavor and taste really quick because that's also important for, for many users. You know, if something tastes terribly and you don't want to take it, it doesn't really matter how effective it is. Now, the cool thing is with Delta G, there are different products, flavors, and concentrations available. There is a Delta G Tactical, which is the most potent product they have. And it contains a whopping 32 grams of the Ox Oxford ketone ester. And it tastes pretty harsh because it's not sweetened or anything. It's just straight up the ester. And it's meant to be diluted or mixed with water. So what I do is when I work out, I either take it as a shot, which tastes pretty harsh, I have to say, or I mix it into, pour it into my water bottle and just drink it throughout, you know, my workout. Delta G Performance, which is the one I used extensively during this testing, is flavored. So it's very pleasant to drink. And it's kind of comparable to ketone IQ from a taste perspective. The only downside of Delta G Performance is that it's flavored with sucralose, which I'm not a huge fan of. I'd rather prefer stevia or monk fruit. But, you know, but, you know, Delta G Performance contains 27 grams of the ketone ester. So you get a little bit less, uh, but still very potent and meant for athletic performance or to improve athletic performance. And then my favorite product I want to say is the Delta G Gold Ketone Coffee Booster. So it's also straight up ester. It comes in a small glass bottle and it has a cup, I think six servings a bottle. So you get approximately five grams of ketone ester and I just pour it into my morning coffee and it's great to improve mental performance. You know, I do this in the morning before I start writing, before I start recording YouTube videos. It just helps me be a little bit, you know, faster in my head, especially when I have to talk a language that is not my native language, like English. You know, so, and, but it's unflavored. And then there is the uh, Delta G Ketone Health, which is 
one of the products I haven't tested, so I can't really tell much about it, but it's also flavored. It's similar to Delta G Performance based on what I've read, but I haven't tried it yet. And it contains only 10 instead of the 27 grams of the ketone ester. So that's the main difference between Delta G Performance and Delta G Health. Ketone IQ, on the other hand, is available in only one flavor. It is flavored. It wasn't in the past. It was pretty harsh tasting in the past. I remember that, but now it's flavored with monk fruit and I think and stevia. And it, it has a pleasant taste. I mean, it's a little, still a little harsh because it's, a, you know, it's butendyl. It's an alcohol at the end of the day. Not ethanol, but an alcohol nonetheless. And you can get it in different sizes. You can give it like in little shot bottles that have 10 grams of butendyl each. Those are the ones that I've tested. And you can find them online or in some grocery stores, even like Whole Foods and, and Sprouts. Or you can get the larger bottle, which contains several servings. So you can pour out as much as you want to, but one serving has still the 10 grams of butendyl. So now let's look at pricing because that's where it starts getting interesting, especially if you want to leverage ketones on an ongoing basis. Now I'm going to show the table of the pricing table up here in the video so you can see what's going on. But if you just look at the the list price, how much do you pay for, you know, a box of Delta G Tactical or Performance or Gold or Keaton IQ, you know, the big bottle or the shots? Then you might say, well, you know, one might be more expensive than the other. But you really have to look at not only what is the price per serving, but more importantly, I think, what is the price per gram adjusted to BHP, to how much BHP you get. And as we have concluded, you get three times as much BHP with each gram of a ketone ester, like the one in Delta G, versus in butendyl. So you really have to multiply the price per gram of butendyl, of a product containing butendyl, to compare it to a product containing the ketone ester. And if you look at it, we can actually see that Delta G is less expensive. Even though the price per gram is more expensive, but normalized or adjusted for the amount of BHP, Delta G is less expensive. In fact, it looks like Delta G Tactic, which is one of the most expensive products, if you just look at the list price, is actually the least expensive if you look at the price per or adjusted for BHP. So that's interesting. And if you look at the ketone IQ shots, they are the most expensive product, you know, which is, you know, not necessarily surprising because, you know, if you buy smaller versions of something, it's always more expensive than if you buy it in bulk. But just a comparison, there is a 50% price increase from getting Delta G Tactical, the most potent product versus the ketone IQ shots. So that's important to understand when you compare, you know, apples to apples, you really have to break it down based on the value you get out of the product instead of just comparing list price or the price per serving, which could be misleading. Now, I have a discount code for you for Delta G. I'm going to link it down below. That gets you an additional discount. You can also use that with a subscription, which is also which also reduces the price. And now before we wrap it up, let me tell you how I use exogenous ketones, and in particular Delta G. And so I already mentioned, I like to put in a few grams of the ketone ester into my morning coffee. It tastes very pleasant with black coffee. I like my coffee black. It already has some sort of, you know, a little bit of bitterness. By adding the ketones, it barely changes the flavor profile. So it still tastes very good. In a way, you might say it kind of tastes maybe a little bit like Irish coffee. So you can kind of, you know, feel like there is an alcohol in there, but it's just the ketones. But it doesn't change the flavor dramatically. I really like that. And that's what I use on a daily basis. And then for certain high intensity workouts, like I do CrossFit. And if I really want to crush it in the gym, I use either Delta G Tactical or Performance. And I did this just for testing to see what how much of a difference it makes to my athletic performance. I did it last year during my annual Murph Challenge. You know, it's a grueling CrossFit workout where you, you know, wear a weight vest, 20 pounds, and you do, you run a mile, you do 100 pull-ups, you do 200 push-ups, 300 squats, and then you run, a, run another mile, all with a weighted vest. And I always do that is the end of a 48 hour fast. So I don't eat anything for two days. Then I do the workout and then I break my fast. And I did it three years ago or two years ago and measured my time. And then I did it again last year running on Delta G ketones and I improved my time by 10 minutes. A significant improvement. I could feel it and I could then see it obviously on the clock. And so, you know, if I have grueling workouts, especially when I'm fasted, I use Delta G to just perform better and to improve my recovery afterwards, because obviously doing that fasting and then doing high intensity workouts cause a lot of oxidative stress and you really want to do everything you can to help your body recover 
and don't run into some sort of overtrading. You know, uh, that's what I do. I'm not on a ketogenic diet on a daily basis anymore. Obviously, if you are, you know, ketones can help, but I just use it with my animal based diet to improve my mental performance on certain days where I have to, you know, use my head a lot, like recording videos, recording a podcast, or writing research intense blog posts. Now, if you want to learn more about Delta G versus Keto IQ, check out my blog post, has some more information, goes a little bit more into the history of both, you know, companies to see why, you know, there is some confusion around why Keto IQ is not an Astra anymore, even though HVMM used to have one, etc. So check all of that out. I hope you like this video. I hope you like the results. Uh, were they surprising to you? Did you think that one would be significantly more effective than the other? Let me know in the comments and I hope I'll see you in the next video.